Hello, I am Dr. Vaseem Sheikh. In today's video, we will talk about dislocation multiplication by Frank Reed mechanism and dislocation interaction. So let us start. So in dislocation multiplication by Frank Reed mechanism, let us consider a scenario here. Let us see in this figure as it is shown that point A and B are two nodes in between there is a dislocation which is held by these two nodes. So figure 1 basically shows a frank rate source consisting of a dislocation line which is fixed at nodes A and nodes B. So imagine if a stress is applied in between these two nodes. So what will happen? If the stress is applied then these nodes and this dislocation will move beyond this node and it will try to bend or it will try to bow out. So under any applied stress the dislocation line will bow out decreasing its radius of curvature and until it reaches an equilibrium position. So it will go on and on and as we are applying the stress more and more this dislocation line will bow out more and more. So under the applied stress it will, it will go on and on and it will bow and it will try to balance the force out due to the applied stress. And at one point of time it will happen that this will become as in a semicircular line and then you keep on applying the load and finally it reaches a point where it is as if a semicircular line and then when you apply the load beyond this point. So imagine a scenario as shown in figure 3 here that if you go on applying or increasing the stress that dislocation line will expand rapidly and it will try to rotate about its nodes A and B and then it will be taking a position as shown in figure 3. The more you apply the load it will bow out and finally it will come to a stage where it will annihilate each other. So between uh, figure 4 and 5 the two parts of the loop between A and B meet and they will try to annihilate each other. Annihilate means they try to destroy each other and they will form a complete loop of dislocation and then again a new node A and B will form and this process or this mechanism will go on and on and finally it will happen that this location will multiply and these nodes will go on repeating themselves and eventually these lines are formed and circles around circles of dislocation will form so basically it is called as a dislocation multiplication or the formation of dislocation by frank reed mechanism now the sequence is repeated as I said earlier, this sequence is repeated and one unit of slip is produced by each loop and it is going on and it is generating itself. To operate the frank reed source, the force applied must be sufficient to overcome the restoring force on the dislocation line which is due to the line tension. So the force is going on increasing. So you can't expect a dislocation to multiply by keeping the constant stress. So you have to increase the stress, you have to increase the amount of load that is you are applying only then the dislocation will multiply because of the frank reed mechanism and as seen in an earlier image the dislocation will form the circle or loops and then it will go on multiplying and you will need more load for deforming the material. So that is the meaning of dislocation multiplication that dislocation are multiplying and you are needing more and more force. So this is what happens in plastic deformation. So whenever you are applying a load on any material, the, the material will try to work hard and then the dislocation will multiply amongst itself and then you will need more load, more load. You will need, you will need some higher load to deform the material again and again and that is nothing but the dislocations are multiplying and then you want to overcome this load and overcome this stress and then only you can deform the material plastically and you can basically go to a point where you reach the ultimate stress and all those things are there which we see in the stress strain diagram. Now the next thing which we are seeing is dislocation interaction. So how the dislocations will interact 
when they are passing or when they are passing through each other so there are two scenarios which we can see interaction of two dislocation produces a sharp break of few atoms spacing in length and in dislocation line so these breaks can be of two types so there can either be a jog or kink so jog or kink is nothing but when the dislocations are interacting you produce either a jog or a kink and this is known as a defect in defect so dislocation as in you have seen edge and screw dislocation they are already a defect and when you see a jog and a kink so jog and a kink is a type of defect so we can say defect in a defect so what happens in a jog so in a jog the the thing which happens is a jog moves it out of the current slip plane so the dislocation will move out of the current slip plane when it encounters a jog and that is nothing but to a parallel plane to a parallel plane so that is nothing but jog and you can see this image where you can see what happens when there is a dislocation interaction through jog so a jog will basically move out the dislocation from the current slip plane to a parallel one so here we see the dislocation line and jog is moving the dislocation line out of the slip plane so one plane is on the top and then the dislocation is basically interacting from the top and then it is taking the dislocation line to a, another plane that plane is parallel to the above plane but it is taking it out of the current plane that is nothing but a jog now what is a kink so a kink is nothing but a dislocation is there and then the another dislocation is interacting in such a way that it is in the same plane it is in the same plane so a kink leaves the dislocation on the slip plane so kink moving a dislocation parallel to itself so the dislocation is moving but it is parallel to itself and but it is on the same plane so that is nothing but a kink so the jog and the kink can be considered as i said earlier a defect in the dislocation line and we can call them that they are defects in defect so this is an image which we can see how the jog is formed so a dislocation line is there in a plane a dislocation is there in the plane then from the top a dislocation is coming and interacting with the plane and then finally it is taking it out of that particular slip plane to a parallel slip plane so on the image which you see on the left hand side the dislocation line is, is there on the above plane and then it is interacting and then as it is leaving the plane it has created a jog and that jog is nothing but it has created a separate dislocation on a separate plane that is parallel to the earlier slip plane similarly here you see a kink a kink is interacting with the dislocation line and then it is just moving the dislocation line in the same plane but it just just a little bit ahead of that plane and then this is nothing but a kink so let us summarize what we have studied today we have seen the frank reed mechanism so frank reed mechanism is nothing but dislocations are trying to multiply themselves when we are applying the load or when we are applying the stress onto the material and the dislocations are multiplying by frank reed mechanisms and loops are generated there is a node of dislocation and it will produce loops upon loop and more load and more stress is required to overcome that node and then dislocations are getting piled up and you need more load for deforming the material and we saw dislocation interaction there are two types of interaction jog and kink jog is nothing but it will move the dislocation line out of the plane but to a another parallel plane kink will just move the dislocation in the same plane and both can be called as defects in defects so thanks for watching the video you can like my video you can share my video you can like my youtube channel and mainly you can subscribe to my channel and you can share it with your colleagues thanks a lot all the best